They replaced plot and dialogue, and they generally called for only one set, which can be built on a Hollywood soundstage. Well, that's not how it worked out when Benjamin Glazer was producing the big broadcast of 1935 for Paramount. In fact, filming the musical numbers became so complicated and it took so long, the movie eventually had to be retitled The Big Broadcast of 1936. They wanted five numbers for the film, so they made the unusual decision to film nine songs and then drop four of them. Paramount was also using performers who were predominantly known for their radio work, and some of their contracts would not allow them to be filmed in Hollywood. Director Norman Tarag filmed the Ray Noble Band playing I Wished on the Moon at the Astoria Studios in New York while Jack Oakey and Lida Roberti danced to the song in Hollywood. Throughout the 30s, actors rarely went on location abroad. When a script called for an exotic location, they just build one on the back lot. Not this time. Some sequences were shot on the African coast, and some in Shanghai, Monte Carlo, even Cuba. One number was filmed in London, and two in Buenos Aires. Now, once the nine musical numbers were in the can, the director had to decide which ones to keep and which ones to cut out. Well, one number that was cut featured a singer named Celia Villa. Her father was the infamous Mexican outlaw Pancho Villa. Here's the big broadcast of 1936. things they used to say was never give Ethel Merman a bad lyric. Everybody will hear it to the back of the house. The song It's the Animal in Me, performed by Ethel and 25 Elephants, was not originally filmed for the big broadcast. Norman Tarot had directed it for a movie called We're Not Dressing, but it was left at that time on the cutting room floor. Well, it turns out the number was good enough to be nominated for an Academy Award for choreographer Leroy Prince. Anyway, remember the scene in which Jack Oakey wore that suit of armor? I almost wish we could have watched what happened off camera when he tried to get out of that thing. It seems that the helmet was somehow wedged underneath the breastplate, and for a while it looked like this guy would be playing uh, one of those knights of the round table for the rest of his life. Oki said, you'll never believe it, he thought it would take a safe cracker to get him out of this thing, but it was a studio metal worker who came to the rescue. He was somehow able to cut or torch out the breastplate. <laughs> to the movies in 1945, so it was only natural for RKO to produce a picture we're about to see, Radio Stars on Parade. Of course, this wasn't the first time radio and its stars were used in a feature film, but RKO promised this one would be filled with top laughs, torrid tunes, and riotous romance. And they lived up to the promise. The movie stars Wally Brown, Alan Carney, and Francis Langford, who gets a chance to belt out some real classics like My Shining Hour and That Old Black Magic. They're joined by a whole gang of colorful supporting players. There's Rotund Don Wilson, who plays himself in this film. You all remember him as Jack Benny's longtime announcer. Other musical guests include the Cappy Barrow Boys, Skinny Ennis and his band, and the Singing Town Criers. Guitarist Tony Romano also puts in an appearance in Radio Stars on Parade. During World War II, Romano had accompanied Francis Langford on Bob Hope's USO tours. In 1951, they got the chance to do something they'd been doing all their lives, play themselves. The film was Columbia's Purple Heart Diary. That was about their experiences with the USO while entertaining the troops. You also will get to see an early version of Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards, years before he became known for This Is Your Life. So now, sit back and enjoy some of the performers we actually used to watch on the radio. Here are Radio Stars on Parade. The time she made this film, Frances Langford had made USO stops with Bob Hope in just about every fighting front except the China-Burma-India area. One time, while performing in the South Pacific, Frances Langford gave the performance of her life. When she finished her set, she turned to walk off stage, giving the love-starved fighting men a full view of her backless evening gown. Well, as you'd expect, the guys went absolutely nuts, causing Bob Hope to ad-lib his classic wisecrack, there goes the biggest ham in Hollywood. She knows how to get applause coming and going. By the way, Radio Stars on Parade would be one of the last films for the comedy team of Wally Brown and Alan Carney. Though they were never truly big stars, they did appear in no less than six Hollywood films. The most notable was the 1944 remake 
of the Marx Brothers Room Service, only it was called Step Lively, and it had Frank Sinatra, and I'm sure that you...